story in The uh, Economist, not a new story. This is a story we talked about on one of my shows, I don't know, a few months ago. But it made The Economist magazine. That's, that's unusual for uh, this kind of woke um, domestic uh, U.S. story to make uh, The Economist. That's unusual. But what The Economist is reporting is something that I think we all know and, and again, we have explicitly talked about on the show in the past. And that is the University of California now. Um, University of California uh, schools are explicitly requiring uh, faculty uh, when applying for jobs to file a statement outlining their understanding of diversity, their past contributions to it, and their plans of how to engage with it in the future. So every candidate for a job in um, at, at University of California system has to let the uh, let let you know let the administration or let the hiring committee know of their attitude towards diversity. Now UCLA does this and they do this pretty quietly and pretty much all jobs now uh, involve these kind of statements. Uh, University of California Berkeley is doing this out in the open and they're talking about it and they're discussing it and they're presenting this so that they feel no shame about this. Uh, we're talking here about every position, including positions in the sciences. So there is a uh, open position, a director of cell culture, fly food, I guess that's flies, food for flies, um, in a lab. Media, uh, media prep, that's not media prep in terms of media out there, but media for uh, in a bio lab. Uh, and on-call glass washing facilities. So this is like a director of a lab, in a lab. Um, uh, you know, they need an advanced degree. They need a decade of research experience. They have to submit a curricular vita and a cover letter and a research statement. Yeah, I mean, all of that sounds like it's related to the job of kind of being a director in a lab, right? As well as their contributions as to advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion. In uh, uh, some positions, uh, I think I reported on this last time we talked about this issue, um, they just screen out all the ones that have really, really bad DEI. They don't even look at the rest of the resume. They might be future Nobel Prize biology winners. They don't even look at them. They, you know, the first screen is the DEI. If you don't qualify DEI, now, one of the arguments here is that because University of California is prohibited from using race uh, to make hiring and even uh, decisions with regard to uh, student placement, the, the, there was a ballot initiative in California uh, that uh, made it illegal to use affirmative action at the universities. This is just a replacement for that. Uh, it'll be interesting if California, and, and interesting, every time that ballot initiative comes up to be challenged, you think leftist California. They'll, they'll, of course, they want affirmative action. It, it, it fails. That is, uh, this is policy, anti-affirmative action California. It, is, uh, oh, it continues to be reinstated by a significant majority of voters. That is, even leftist Californians don't want affirmative action, affirmative action, which is, I think, interesting in and of itself. So the universities, given that the universities as left as California is, given that the UC system is further to the left than the average Californian, they keep finding different ways to figure out how to create affirmative action without actually having the affirmative action. And they do this, I guess, through these DEI, um, uh, DEI uh, statements. You see this throughout. Um, uh, throughout. Now, uh, I'm not that worried about the California school system doing this because at the end of the day, what is going to happen? Two things, I think, happen. One is people figure out how to game the system. Uh, I'm sure already today you can ask ChatGPT to create a DEI statement for you, and ChatGPT will do a pretty good job and, and, and submit that statement. In other words, I, I'm sure that you can look up online to find a generic DEI acceptable statement and then modify it a little bit to, to, to make the case, and I'm sure uh, almost everybody's submitting basically the basic stuff that they need to in order to get in. So one is it, it becomes a perfunctory standard hurdle that you have to pass, but no big deal beyond that. But let's say that isn't the case. Let's say they're really taking this seriously and this is a big deal. Well, then California universities will become, will start hiring 
based on something insignificant. The quality of their research and the quality of the science will decline. And the California uh, institutions like Berkeley and, and, and uh, UCLA and other state uh, institutions under the University of California umbrella will just decline in quality. Pe less people want to go work there. Um, uh, they, they will have uh, fewer uh, sophisticated scientists. But the good scientists are going to find places to work. They might go to MIT. They might go to other universities that don't use DEI statements. DEI is diversity, equity, and inclusion. They'll go to other universities that don't use uh, DEI statements. They'll go to, I, mean, I don't know if Stanford uses them or not. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. But there are lots of universities. Maybe they'll go to the University of Texas system or the University of Florida system or other places. The better scientists will find jobs. The better scientists will have access. What you'll see is a decline in the University of California and an increase elsewhere. This takes time. It's unfortunate. Resources would be wasted. It's sad to see California schools, which are some of the best in the world, declining, but that is the consequence of, of, of the actions. Uh, in many ways, much more scary than this is the fact that now uh, government, the federal government, the federal government, which is a massive allocator of funds for basic research, are starting to use DEI uh, statements. For example, the Department of Energy, which funds research on nuclear and plasma physics, nuclear and plasma physics, will require all grant applicants to submit plans on, quote, promoting inclusive and equitable research. I mean, uh, we all know that plasma physics uh, is riddled with racist policies, riddled with racist research, and non-inclusive research, anti-inclusive research. Uh, so it's a real relief that now uh, when you apply for a, a grant for plasma research, we can get now, uh, well, now that research will now be more equitable and, and less. I mean, this is absurd. And this is uh, truly insane. Since 2021, the Brain in Initiative at the National Institute of Health has required prospective grantees to file a plan for enhancing diversity perspectives. Because we know that different races have different perspectives on issues of, I don't know, brain biology. Teams must be diverse to do this investigation. Now, note that this has multiple effects. One is it basically involves massive waste of money. People are going to be hired just so they can have a diverse research team. That means research teams will decline in quality. It means that money will be allocated not very effectively. The government doesn't do a great job allocating money anyway, but now it will be even less effective. This is one of the main reasons why I, one of the main reasons why in my, um, uh, in my argument to change the American Constitution to have four separations, one of the separations is a separation from state and science. The state should not be involved in science, should not be giving scientific grants, should not be involved in determining what science is good, what science is, is bad. The state should not have an opinion about science one way or the other and should not be funding any of it. Uh, you know, that goes together with the separation of state from education. But so you get less efficient, as bad as government funding of science is, it now becomes worse. And then you get bad teams. Um, and then you know, on top of that, what you get is a complete politicization of science. What you get in this is, is, is DEI becoming just part of the culture, being everywhere, people getting jobs based on it, and, and, and it becomes to dominate everything we do. And that is a recipe for America to become, to, to dramatically decline in terms of science, technology, in terms of everything that we do. This is a way for us to, to, to clearly lose whatever it is that has made America special. Now, I mean, maybe one of the positive things is that most scientists, over 50% of scientists in the STEM uh, areas, are, um, are immigrants. So maybe, maybe they fit into DEI categories, although many of them are probably Asians, and that probably disqualifies them. So it's just, it's just bewildering and mind-boggling. 
that uh, this is an issue that what we should really be concerned about is the efficiency of government funding of science, which is very low. And we should be finding ways to increase that efficiency because future technological progress depends, to, at least to some extent, on basic research being done today. And sadly, almost all basic research is government funded. So this, it would be good if, if the funding was as good as it could be. You know, in the Harvard Law Review, encourages prospective editors to submit alongside the application, this is students, right, a 200-word statement to identify and describe aspects of your identity, including, but not limited to, racial or ethnic identity, socioeconomic background, disability, physical, intellectual, cognitive, neurological, psychiatric, sensory, developmental, or other, and gender identity. And the list goes on. I mean, this is intersectionality as applied to hiring. Uh, the lower down on the totem pole you are in terms of the more oppressed you are, then the more likely it is you to be hired by the Harvard Review, uh, Law Review and other such places. Uh, this is egalitarianism in action. This is the elevation, and, and it's the more miserable and pathetic and oppressed you present yourself as being, the more virtuous you are and the more deserving of a position and a job and dollars and money you become. And this is a way of America to become irrelevant. Now, there is a huge backlash of this, of course. And part of that backlash is uh, Republican-led state legislators are forcing eradicating this, They're, you know, in, uh, whether it's Florida Stop Woke Act, which is probably massive overreach by the, by the state government. Uh, but uh, the elimination of DEI, which I think it makes a lot more sense. I think what, what state legislators can do is they can prohibit universities from using DEI. If, if it's true that DEI matters, that they're taking it seriously at places like UC, that would lead talent to ultimately be hired at places that where DEI is not used, uh, maybe University of Florida, Texas systems. You would expect to see a brain drain from one place to another. We'll wait and see. On the other hand, um, uh, you know, this could be very much is a fad. So uh, this is what a, 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 a Janet Haley, from a professor of law at Harvard, of all places, says. She says, bureaucratizing ideology saps sin sincerity. She says, people will utter the hocus pocus. They know what they're being required to put on an act. And that's going to create cynicism about the very values that the people who put these requirements into place care about. Uh, quote, forced speech and viewpoint discrimination is a First Amendment issue. Uh, you know, the courts are probably going to rule against it. It's probably going to be broken up. You know, the, the court is probably going to make race-based um, uh, admission into college uh, illegal. Uh, the Supreme Court will probably do that uh, very soon. It, it could very well that the courts, uh, you know, uh, uh, make DEI hiring illegal as well in the future. Who knows? So, I, you know, I can't see this continuing, and I see the damage hopefully minimized, it, but it is creating just, just a crazy, and I'd hate to be somebody in the job market right now being forced to write a stupid DEI statement in order to get a job. I mean, when I was up for a job in, um, this is 1993, uh, you know, interviewed in 92 and 93, um, all this was relevant even back then. So we always think, woke. oh my God. I was basically told by the department that ultimately hired me that they couldn't offer me a job immediately because there was a black female candidate on the job market that in order to satisfy the administration, they had to offer her a job, even though they wanted me over her. But they had to offer her a job because they needed to at least show that they tried to hire a black or a woman. And I, I mean, she was the dream because it was a black and a woman. But then the guy, the, the chairman of the department told me, don't worry, because everybody's offering her a job. She is the most desired candidate on the job market this year, not because she's the best, but because she's a black female. So they offered her a job. She declined it. 
She'll end up, I think, going to Ohio State or something like that, a, a much more prestigious university in terms of finance. And, and this is the finance department. This is Santa Clara University, a Jesuit university. So this kind of stuff has been going on forever. It just disguises itself in different ways, and, and they go through different rituals, and they play different games. It's just sickening. It's sickening. And it's gotten to the point where it's even crazier now than it was back then. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.